At the beginning of this year, we put together a list compiling all the new for 2023 roller coasters that we anticipated riding throughout the year and took a guess of how much we'd like them. I think in a lot of cases we were right, in a lot of cases we were pretty off. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at the actual roller coasters that we ended up riding because there were some that we did not experience this year. You're going to yeah. see shortly. And there are some that we did experience that we didn't put on the list because exactly. we didn't think we would. Absolutely. So let's see how these new for 2023 roller coasters all stack up to each other. All 17 that we experienced. Coming in at number 17 is one right off the bat that was not on our original list, and that is Rookie Racer at Six Flags St. Louis. Yeah, so this is their new family coaster, which was a much needed addition. Uh, it's just taking the last spot because it's, for one, a clone of a ride that we've already seen before, we've already experienced, but there's nothing wrong with the ride. Like, it's good for what it is. And coming up next in the same market of family thrill is Flying Viking as part of Adventureland's new expansion. So they got Flying Viking as well as Draken Falls, which was the built-in water ride. And I think we put this slightly above it just because it's cool how integrated the two attractions are. It's really, really smart. I've, I've never really seen anything quite like that. Except for the one also at Coney Island. Well, <laughs> okay, well that's literally the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's awesome. It's great innovation from Zamperla. Heck yeah. Coming in at number 15 is Aquaman Power Splash at P six foot. Power Wave. What? Aquaman Power Wave. I thought it was Power Splash. No. Oh my god. Hmm. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at number 15 is Aquaman Power Wave at Six Flags Over Texas. Which is a pretty solid attraction as far as water rides go. Like, I would much rather take this over just like a typical shoot the shoots. Yeah. Um, uh... As a roller coaster, it's okay, you know? Um, the first launch is pretty tame. The backwards spike going up is cool. And then, of course, you have the big finale splashdown. To me, like, I acknowledge, I acknowledge it's a roller coaster, but it doesn't really feel like one as much yeah. as some of all of the others on this list, really. Like, Riding Rookie Racer felt like more like riding a roller coaster than yeah. Aquaman, but it's more high thrill. It was really cool. It was really cold out when we did it, yeah. but it was still fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cedar Point's been busy working on Top Thrill 2 over this offseason, but earlier this year they debuted another roller coaster, the Wild Mouse, which was, again, another much needed addition here at Cedar Point. Yeah, it was like a really good Wild Mouse, too. Like, usually I'm not a fan yeah. of wild mice, mouses. I don't know, meese. the proper meese. What? I actually really liked this one. Like, it actually had some, like, cool whippy moments to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's still very much a family coaster. And just to clarify, obviously, the Wild Mouse is not more thrilling than Aquaman Power Wave. However, we were definitely more surprised by the Wild Mouse, whereas with Aquaman, we kind of knew what to expect. For one, we'd already done uh, the one at Wallaby Belgium. So that also has something to do with it. Coming in at number 13, and I guess what should be 13, 12, 11, and 10, but it's not. We're just going to count it as one. The Kid Flash Coasters. <laughs> yeah. So we did all four sides that opened up earlier this year between Six Flags Over Georgia and Fiesta Texas. We thoroughly enjoyed these. They're really cute. Yeah. First of all, the layouts are like actually pretty fun. They've got a lot of cool moments to them. I think that this is probably the best example of what a kid's coaster could be. Absolutely. Uh, I honestly think it's like a new gold standard of like dressing up something for because you know you want to get kids excited to ride roller coasters and i think those like little enough milers or you know little they have nothing going on they're not pretty they're, they're kind of janky exciting. looking you know you throw a kid on something like that and they're like oh Whoa, yeah this is so cool well and i think something we literally said earlier this year was this is a kids coaster that you don't feel bad riding like any other kids coaster was like all right gonna go get the credit here this is like wait that looks great yeah i'll hop on that <laughs> just saying we're all thinking it <laughs> At the number 12 spot, we have the brand new B&M Multi-Launch Shuttle Family Wing Coaster at Chessington. It's Mandrel Mayhem. The thing is, we put this as like the lowest high thrill, I guess, coaster high on the thrill. list. High thrill, yeah. It was supposed to be a family coaster. It has like a similar identity crisis to like Cheetah Hunt. Yeah. Uh, where it's like, oh, it's a family coaster, but like it goes upside down. So it's like... Is it's it though? <laughs> very, very strange. This was a ride that like we both walked away from being like, I don't really know what to think about that. And that's not. I did. I wasn't a fan. There I really go. wasn't. I yeah. mean, like the thing is, it's very, very cool to look at. Yeah. Oh, it's a visual spectacle. It really is. However, it doesn't ride that well. No, it doesn't. The layout is not interesting. No. Like it's the only part that I actually thought was really cool was like the spike if you were in like the very backwards facing seat. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, I liked that. That was it. Coming in at number 11, we have a coaster that probably should have been higher, but due to a very, very, very sad lack of good thematics, 
it's coming in a lot lower, and that's Dark Coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I wish that we could have had this ride higher. In fact, we're gonna reference our predictions at the end of this video, and you'll see that Dark Coaster was higher in mm -hmm. our original uh, speculation, but we joke that this is literally Spirit Halloween the ride, and that's because I'm pretty sure I've seen some of the set pieces in this ride actually at Spirit Halloween. Yeah, like it's the whole thing is they were like, okay, we're going for a snowstorm theme. That's what it is on the facade. That's what it is on the inside. And then you get on the ride. And like the only thing that really feels like snowy about it is how freaking cold it is in there. The actual layout was okay. I mean, you know, uh, some sections could have written better, a little vibrating, but overall, I wish this ride was better than it was. Me too. And just cracking the number 10 spot is the new Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun. Not to be confused with the original Zambezi Zinger, which has been operating for 20 years at Parque del Cafe, which we also rode earlier this year. Yeah, to me, that's like one of our greatest accomplishments that we got to do both in the same way. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, that was very, very cool. However, I will say, I ended up actually liking the old shortstop a bit better. Dang. And I don't mean that to like be a dig at the new one because actually I enjoyed the new one as well But it's a little more tame like I think this one was meant to be a little more like family friendly Not yeah. that the old one isn't mm -hmm. but it, that one is a little more like janky and out of control sure. This one was a little, like obviously more refined But it didn't ride as well as it should have for a new for 2023 roller coaster. It was Operating like a ride that's been open for several years. Yeah, I mean the thing is we only saw it in the very front and the very back But we heard that the middle was a bit rough mm -hmm. uh, The restraints were a little uncomfortable, but again, Definitely. it's a prototype. Yeah, and I imagine like GCI had their heart in the right place Yeah, I think that they will fix it and it'll be Awesome when they build future versions. Yeah, for sure But as for based off of our experience we had at the number 10 spot we are now in the single digits. Dun dun dun. And for number nine, we have Madugani. Yeah, which is technically not a new roller coaster, but it's new for most people. Uh, it was operating originally at Liseberg, and then it just opened up at Lost Island Theme Park in Iowa. And it's awesome. It, it was a good time. It's not anything like crazy. It's still old school intimate, but like we had a lot of fun with it. This is an interesting one because it kind of like unlocks a can of worms as yeah. far as like the credit debate. And I'm gonna just jump into it a little <laughs> bit here because we have a very close friend who did this back when it was Kanonen, and when he did it again as Madagani, he counted as a new credit. We don't I have that like no. issue. We didn't write it. At but Lisebert. if I had, I still would not have done that. Okay. So then, by us calling it a new for twenty twenty three coaster, are we agreeing with him? Uh, I say no, but that's just because I don't want to make things more complicated. Excellent. <laughs> okay, that's fine by me, and I will say I liked the ride. It wasn't anything like insanely mind blowing, but it's a, it was really cool. It was themed very nicely. Yeah. Um, I, I liked it. That's about it. And the number eight spot is a roller coaster that we didn't even originally include in our predictions that we released earlier this year because we weren't sure we were going to get on it. And frankly, Lagoon barely even got this thing open in time for the 2023 season. It's primordial. This is like a totally in house roller coaster made by Lagoon. Definitely thought that there were parts of it that could have been a bit better. Yeah, there were a few spots here and there. For the most part, though, it was really well done. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you compare like this is just like a random standalone family owned park in the middle of Utah and they like poured a lot of time and oh, effort yeah. and money into this thing. For that, it's like a 10 out of 10 for yeah. them doing all like it's amazing and incredible feat. The ride itself is really cool. Like I said, not a ton of coaster sections. I would have loved if they had just like a little bit more. Yeah. And I probably would put this higher if we'd gotten to experience more than one of the potential endings. Yeah, that was a bummer. They have like three roller coaster sections that are the ending and we only got one of them. Yeah. Thanks, hour and a half line. Yeah. We waited for it twice and got the same ending both times. Big Bear, Big Bear <laughs> Mountain, Big Bear, we're looking for you. God bless Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> so this was apparently Dollywood's biggest investment ever. And I can see why, because even though it's not like insanely themed or anything, it is long and the yeah. cost of steel is like through the freaking roof oh, yeah. right now. So it definitely was. <laughs> and the first coaster with onboard audio. Yeah. Uh, like everything about this ride was just like fantastic. And limbs. It's three of them, three launches on this family coaster and 39 inch height requirements. So you that's can bring crazy. literally everyone on this ride and like. That's like a baby. I, like that's a really. Real that's small a, kid. Yeah, that's a little thing. And as coaster enthusiasts, we were riding this thing having a blast on it. Like oh, yeah. Dollywood, Vacoma, you guys knocked out of the park with this one. And just barely missing the top five is a roller coaster that's been a long time coming. It's Tron Light Cycle Run at the Magic Kingdom. This has been under construction, I want to say, 
what is it, seven years since it was originally Six announced? Six or seven. It's, it was so overdue. Yeah. yeah and COVID didn't help. It, COVID did not help. But even COVID aside, I think it didn't help that Disney also had Gardens of the Galaxy going on at the same time. That yeah. they didn't really have that much motivation to put out another new coaster because mm-hmm. the attendance was already through the roof. Yeah. So like, well, we could take our sweet time. And they did. Yep. Especially for being a cloned ride. Oh, I know. No, it's ridiculous. But, I mean, it turned out great. I mean, it's not perfect. I think we both said that we would have liked to have seen maybe even like an extra helix at the end. And It's we, too short. Yeah, the length is probably the biggest downside. I will also say I wish that it didn't hit the mid-courses quite as hard. But, like, thematically, visually, incredible. Walking under that canopy, you're like, oh my gosh. It, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful ride. If you go into it knowing it's not going to be a super long experience, it doesn't bother you as much. The trains are amazing. Yep. Overall, like I'm very happy that it is there, but it's still not my favorite coaster in Tomorrowland. Coming in at number five, we have Pipeline, the surf coaster, aka the revitalization of the stand-up. The one ride, I would say more so than any other coaster on this list, that we just had our expectations blown out of the water. Oh yeah. I don't think we really thought we were gonna like this thing very much at all. No, no, definitely not. Like new stand-up coaster? What? That sounds weird. That doesn't sound fun. And I don't then, like stand-up coasters. Yeah. I don't like them. I just it's not my thing. Yeah, and we take our first ride on pipeline and then we just get ejected. Our feet literally lifted off the floor and we're like, that's a sensation I've never felt before. And I'm like, What? I could do that again. Yeah. yeah. And, again. and then we did. I, I mean, we live very close by, so we go and ride this thing fairly often. Yeah. And you know, it's Probably not my favorite at the park, but it's definitely a second. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, with it being a prototype, there are definitely some things I'd love to see fixed in the future. Like uh, the vests are definitely pretty tight on the collarbones, which would be nice to see an adjustment for. And I'd hope that with the next surf coaster, we get maybe more of that airtime airtime experience. Because right now it's mainly in the first half of the ride. It doesn't need inversions. I don't even think it needs inversions per se. Yeah. You could do a hyper style layout with those trains. Camelbacks on those trains? Let's do it. And at the number four spot, another coaster that people have been waiting a bit for, it's Tutatis at Park Asterix, a ride that we really enjoyed. And that isn't saying too much because like we knew going in, like Intamin, LSM, multi-launch coaster. Oh yeah, it's going to be Those are my trigger words. (laughs) (laughs) They really are. The theming is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. It blows Pantheon out of the water as far as the way it looks. But I will say I was very, very, very sad about how lackluster that big drop was. That was the main thing yeah. that turned me off. Yeah, but I mean, that layout as a core is really, really good. Like yes. most of those elements are just like awesome. The way it like tosses you around, you're getting airtime. The full layout like that, like after the, you know, swing launch and everything is better on Tutatis than Pantheon. Yeah, new challenge. Can we talk about Tutatis no. without referencing Pantheon? No, we can't. We <laughs> really, really can't. Hey, look at your shirt. Voila. Coming in at number three, we have Air Force One, which is the, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but the state of the art, brand new, all steel RMC for Fun Spot Atlanta. Yeah. Um, Fun Spot Atlanta. <laughs> what? This ride, to no surprise, was incredible. I mean, no, the yeah, location is totally bizarre, but the roller coaster experience is unreal. Uh, we did it on opening weekend. We went back in October. It was still running amazing. It hasn't stopped blowing my mind that a park like that has a ride like that. Yeah. The airtime is sensational. Um, every moment on that roller coaster is like so forceful, so impactful. Uh, you're getting sent up out of your seat. The stall is incredible. The outer bank, um, the arcade roll. The that arcade we're talking roll about. is the best part of the ride. Yeah. I love it. I will say I did not love the ending. The ending I was the not. one downside. That was the one moment on the coaster that I think that we walked away from going, you know, I wish that was a bit better. It was more that it was like, I wish it was a bit less. It was too <laughs> much. At the number two spot, we have Wildcats Revenge at Hershey Park. Like, okay. We going into this expected a mid-tier RMC. We didn't expect this thing to just completely blow our minds. Holy crap, Hershey. Yeah, we'll go into the details of that a little bit more at the end when we do a comparison with our old list. But like, bottom line, this is an amazing roller coaster. Oh yeah. It's unbelievable. It's definitely the best thing at Hershey Park, if you ask me. Which we didn't expect. We thought Skyrush was gonna be still number one. Yeah, I didn't even expect it to be number two or maybe it would be number three was probably my guess. But like, I thought this was very much going to be a supporting cast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't expect it to just blow everything out of the water and become probably the best coaster in the state. 
It's like crazy. Dude, those night rides we got earlier this year. They were stupid. Unreal. If that is the future of RMC, the direction that they're going with Joe Draves, I am very content. They're gonna be just fine. I want to insert the you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we can do that. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. At our number one spot was the clear winner for the best roller coaster of 2023 for us, and that was Gotham City Escape. Holy crap, this ride was incredible. And honestly, that's that's not too much of a surprise. Like Tutatis, we heard Intamin, LSM, multi-launch coaster. Trigger words. Yeah, uh, it sounded awesome and it was incredible. So this is Parque Warner Madrid. They went all out for this thing. That is the new best roller coaster in Spain. Uh, one of the best ones in Europe for sure. Uh, easily a roller coaster that everyone should go out and try and experience at some point. Yeah, so to me, this is very much a showcase piece. Yeah. For Intamin, like it really shows off everything they can do and it's also a showcase piece for that park. Mm -hmm. To be like, look what we can do with theming. Yeah. Like, like the whole, like going inside of Wayne Manor and going in the freaking bat cave was so cool. It was awesome. It was so cool. And then like how creative the layout is. And one thing that I feel like isn't a huge deal, but I thought it was really cool, was like the braking mechanism. That you went into a spike to slow the coaster down, and which like mm -hmm. then saves the park money on brakes. Like how yeah, really, genius is that? Really interesting stuff. Literally like turntable back into yeah. the station. So I'm sure that we're going to see like technology like that utilized more in the future. And this was like where it all started. So. Yeah. Part of me is like, wow, I wish it wasn't so far away. But then I remember I literally have lost coast for like 10 minutes down the road. I was going to say. It's really not <laughs> that big of a deal. Um, one thing that's interesting though is that we very much thought it was going to feel like Spanish Velocicoaster. That's what we kept calling mm -hmm. it. And it really wasn't. Yeah. It looks kind of like Velocicoaster, but it, it, it like very it. much has its own identity. Yeah. Um, the layout's really not similar. And I mean that in the best way. Like, like they're so distinctly unique and both like 10 out of 10. So. Yeah. Mm, love. So let's talk about our predictions, our original rankings for these rides. So as we mentioned earlier, there were a couple that were not on the list. So that includes Primordial, Madagani, Flying Viking, and Rookie Racer. Couple rides that were on the list that we did not get to experience this year, Palindrome and All-American Triple Loop. Did not open this year. So progress reports on those two rides. I believe they've at least broken ground on Palindrome. Yeah, they have footers going in and all the track is still on site. So yeah. hopefully that'll be going vertical soon. And All-American Triple Loop is testing now. Yeah. So we're getting there. Yeah, so that will open in 2024. So we're gonna have a list coming out soon, ranking our predictions for the 2024 coasters. And so I'm sure Palindrome, as well as All American Triple Loop will be on the list once again. My God, did we put Circuit Breaker on there? I don't even know. I guess technically you have to. I feel like that the odds of it opening this year though are not that great, but- It's okay, I mean, we're gonna play along anyway, it's fine. <laughs> So here you can see the original rankings that we had. A uh, couple that stand out in my mind, Pipeline at number 10. Yeah, we were way, way off with that one. Which is good. Like, I love it when a ride just like blows your mind, you know? Yeah, and also Wildcats Revenge. That we put as the second best RMC to open, and it definitely was not. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you could still make an argument for Airy Force. In my heart, it, I am very sold on Wildcats Revenge. Okay. It, it, I could see it going back and forth, but still being at number five when in our new list we had it at number two. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a good size jump. Well, again, it was like we were like, it's going to be mid tier. Now it's like one of the best. If And some people think it's the best. Yeah, Just yeah, saying. for sure. I will also say, I think we had Tron a little higher than what we originally expected. But going into it, we didn't know it was going to be as short. And I think yeah. that's the only thing that was really holding it back. Yeah, I had never watched a POV video. No, neither had I. Not yeah. that it would really do much. It's pretty dark. So another one that we definitely were a little off about, not by nearly as dramatic of a jump, but that would be Dark Coaster. Because I think, again, we expected a little more theming, which yeah. in retrospect, I don't know why we did, <laughs> <laughs> but we did. And then also Zambezi, we had originally at number seven, and in our current list, we have it at number 10. Uh, so in this case, I think that the trains and how it rode definitely kind of left a little bit to be desired there. Uh, but still, like, honestly, 
I feel like we did pretty good with our original list. Like, we were overall in the right ballpark for most of them. Yeah, and we actually, the only coasters that were on the list that we didn't ride never opened. Yeah. So we did a pretty good <laughs> job of getting everything we wanted to do. Yeah, taking a guess of what roller coasters we get on. Heck yeah. Nailed it. Yay. So, let us know down in the comments below, what were your favorite new for 2023 roller coasters? And like we mentioned earlier, stay tuned for the 2024 ranking predictions coming soon. Ah. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.